Hi, Joel Nemdi here, also known as Dr. Bones of the survival website doomandbloom.net, co-author of the Book Excellence Award winner in medicine, the fourth edition of the Survival Medicine Handbook. A creature's environment determines in great part its long-term success or failure. For waterfowl, that environment is a lake or a seacoast. For elk, it's meadows and forests. For bats, it's a cave. Take these animals out of their favorite environment, and with few exceptions, they just aren't as successful. It's true that the family medic should concentrate on the basics, like how to wrap an ankle sprain or stop bleeding. Special attention, however, has to be given to the climate. The medic must learn how to treat the medical issues most likely to be seen where they live. In this video, we're going to discuss what you should know about damage caused by cold exposure, also called hypothermia. There are various mechanisms that result in heat loss from the body and eventually hypothermia. They include respiration. Air is warmed through inhaling more when breathed through the nose, by the way, than the mouth. That warmth is then lost during exhalation. Evaporation. The body sweats, which releases heat from the body core. Heat loss through evaporation increases in dry, windy weather conditions. Radiation. The body loses heat to the environment when the ambient or surrounding temperature drops below, let's say, about 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Much lower temperatures cause heat loss much more quickly. Conduction. The body loses heat when its surface is in direct contact with cold temperatures. If you're naked outside, your core temperature will drop quickly. It's worse if you fall off a boat in frigid water, for example. Water being denser than air removes heat from the body much faster. And convection. When a cooler object is in motion against the body core, like wind, heat loss is inevitable. The thin, slightly heated layer of air next to the skin is removed, which requires the body to use energy to reheat. Wind chill is one example of air convection. If the ambient temperature is 32 degrees Fahrenheit, but the wind chill factor is 15 degrees Fahrenheit, you lose heat from your body as if it were actually 15 degrees. Hypothermia occurs when the body core temperature drops below what's necessary for normal function and metabolism. The normal body core temperature is defined as between 97.5 to 99.5 Fahrenheit or 36 to 37.5 degrees Celsius. Symptoms related to cold exposure begin to manifest once the core temperature dips below 95 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 degrees Celsius. How does the body respond? The body, when it's exposed to cold, kicks into action to produce heat. One way it does this is by a process called vasoconstriction. Blood vessels tighten to decrease flow to the extremities, thereby conserving core temperature. When vasoconstriction fails to maintain a normal body temperature, the body's going to attempt to produce heat by muscle contractions known as shivering. This will be the first symptom you're likely to see as a medic. As things worsen, more symptoms will become apparent if the patient is not warmed. The first noticeable symptom of worsening hypothermia will be related to mental status. The patient is going to appear confused and uncoordinated. As the condition worsens, speech becomes slurred and the patient will appear apathetic, lethargic, and maybe even uninterested in helping themselves. They may indeed fall asleep. This occurs due to the effect of cooling temperatures on the brain. The colder the body core gets, the slower the brain works. Eventually, brain function ceases and organs fail. In general, you should assume that anyone encountered in cold weather with altered mental status is hypothermic until proven otherwise. Important measures to take include getting the person out of the cold. Transport as soon as possible to a warm, dry location. If you are unable to move the person out of the cold, shield them as much as possible, making sure to place a barrier on the ground, which is cold, between them and the earth. In mild cases, exercise to produce heat. If victims who are alert and can move without difficulty, mild exercise can help raise body temperature as long as they stay dry. Avoid exertion in anyone with altered mental status, however. Monitor the breathing. A person with severe hypothermia may be unconscious. You have to verify that the patient is indeed breathing and check for a pulse. If none, assume the patient's still revivable and begin CPR. Elevate the feet as you would for anyone in shock. You want to remove wet clothing. If the person is wearing wet clothing, remove it gently. Cover with layers of dry blankets, including the head, but leave the face clear. You want to share body heat. Well, this is controversial. But there may be circumstances where it's necessary to warm the person's body by removing your clothing and making skin-to-skin -skin contact. Quickly cover both of your bodies with blankets. Now, some people may cringe at this suggestion, but it's important to remember you're trying to save a life. 
Now, if and only if the patient is awake and alert, you want to give warm, non-caffeinated oral fluids. Despite the image of St. Bernard dogs saving alpine mountaineers with casts of brandy around their neck, alcohol is a bad idea. Alcohol may give you a warm feeling, but it causes your blood vessels to expand. This accelerates heat loss from the surface of your body and negates the body's efforts to stay warm. Alcohol and recreational drugs also cause impaired judgment. Those under the influence might fail to dress appropriately for cold temperatures. You want to also use warm, dry compresses if you have them. First aid shake and break warm compresses or warm but not hot water in a plastic bottle will effectively apply heat to the body core if placed in the neck, armpit, chest wall, or groin. Don't use a heating pad or heating lamp, however, on the person directly. The extreme heat can damage the skin and cause strain on the heart, even leads to cardiac arrest in some cases. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. To prevent hypothermia, you must anticipate the climate you're going to be traveling through, including current temperature, wind conditions, and rain or snow. Condition yourself physically to be fit for the challenge. Travel with partners and carry spare dry clothing, a way to make heat, and enough food and water for the entire trip. Hypothermia can kill even the most rugged survivalists. Dress appropriately, make shelter, and keep warm. If you can accomplish these goals, a harsh winter will be just a bump on the road, not the end of the road for you and your people. This is Joe Alton, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health and good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you're the family medic, have you gotten your copy of the Book Excellence Award-winning fourth edition of the Survival Medicine Handbook? And don't forget to get medically prepared with quality kits and individual supplies from our entire line at store.doomandbloom.net. You'll be glad you did.